In the last part of the series, part three, I showed you how to add data to your database via the Django API and admin console. And actually, I got the admin console opened up here, and I want to make a show you how to make a change. So you can see War and Peace, Lou Tolstoy, no, it's actually Leo Tolstoy. So to edit this, just go ahead and click on it, make the change there, and then click Save. And now that is correct. So, okay, so in this final video, I'm going to show you how to create a public interface so that an end user can add data. So first, let's go ahead and open up the urls.py file. So it's going to be under test project. Go ahead and right click, edit with notepad++. Let's go ahead and add this code to the URL patterns. And let me just go ahead and copy and paste this because we're going to be using a lot of this. So URL and then books, a dollar sign. Actually, we're not using all that much of it, but that helped a little bit. So books.views.index. Go ahead and save that. So this is a uh, tuple, which is an immutable list that points a user to a Django page the views based on a URL. So the URL is this first part here, and you can see the regular expression here. So basically this means that any URL that ends in books will be pointed to the books views.index page, which we'll be creating here in just a second. So let's go ahead and make sure that's set up correctly. So you want to run the server, which I already have running. Let me actually control break and clear the screen here. So to run the server, you just want to um, do Python manage.py run server. So then open up your browser, localhost port 8000 forward slash books. And you should see the following error here. View does not exist at forward slash books forward slash. So this means that the URLs are set up correctly. URLs that we just set up. So we just do not have the main views page set up. So let's go ahead and kill the server. Let me uh, just explain that one more time while we're getting this error. So this part is correct. So since we went to books here, that forwarded us to books.views.index, but since that doesn't exist, we're getting this error. So we need to create this, which is exactly what we're going to do now. So you want to go ahead and open up the views.py file. And that's going to be in our app here, views.py, edit with notepad++. So we want to create a view. So from django.http, we're going to import HTTP response. Do a function here, index request. Turn HTTP response. And let's just go ahead and say hello. This is a test. Go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and fire up the server again. Go ahead and refresh the page, and we should see that text that we just entered, which is right here. Hello, this is a test. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more practical, and let's go ahead and display all the books that are in the database. So let's go back to the views.py file, and I'm going to add in the following code. So from books models I want to import books so 
books underscore list equals books dot objects dot all. And that's going to be all of the objects in the database. And we want to put the variable here, books list. Let's go and save that file. And I left the uh, server running. So let's go ahead and refresh this. So all the books are here. It's not pretty, but hey, at least it works. Let's pause for a second. So notice how I'm building this app step by step, a piece at a time, so that it's not only easy to understand, but also easy to test if problems should arise. Okay, so now we're going to work with Django templates, which basically allow us to easily set up nice views for the end user as the templates separate HTML from Django code. So first we want to create a directory to hold the templates. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the server, back out. So I'm going to create the templates directory in the Django directory outside of my project. So I'm going to do make directory templates and I'm going to go ahead and change directory to that directory I just created. And then I'm going to create another directory or folder called books. So all the templates for that app will reside in there. So next we want to open up settings.py. Let me back out. It's going to be in the project. Right click here, edit with Notepad. We want to scroll down to the template underscore dirs or directories. So, this is where we're going to add the path to the templates directory that we just created. And notice here that we always want to use forward slashes, even in Windows. So I'm going to do C, colon, and I just did a backslash. So forward slash, Python 27, forward slash Django, forward slash templates. Go ahead and save that. So now we want to go ahead and create the template. So we want to add a new file within the books template directory called index.html. We back out of this, templates, books, new text documents, we're going to name it, as I said, index.html, and edit that with Notepad++. So we're going to add in some code here, which is basically a mixture of HTML and Python. It actually reminds me of a PHP page, just without all the PHP. I'm going to do an H1, and I'm just going to say my fab as in fabulous book collection. Close out the H1. And watch as I type here. So if books underscore list. So the bracket here and the uh, percentage sign is how we denote Python from HTML. So we're saying if books underscore list and books underscore list was in the views here. So that is all of the objects in the database. So all of the books. So the title, author, and whether it's been read or not. So we're saying if that exists, I'm going to do a list here. I'm going to do a for loop. So I'm going to do some more Python here for b in books underscore list. Let's start the list. So I want to parse out the title, author, and then whether it's been read. So we're going to do b dot title. author and then b.read close the list here 
and then close the loop. So I need a space there. Get this out of the way. Close this out. And then finally, I want to close out the if statement. And if. Okay, let me go and save that. Okay, so finally let's open up the views.py file again and we're going to add in a couple more statements. So from django.templates import context and loader. The loader will pull in the path for the template that we just created, which then is going to get assigned to the Python object via the context dictionary. So you'll see what I'm talking about here um, in just a second when I type this in. So I'm going to say t equals loader.get underscore template. So here is the path index and here's the file index.html let's say c equals context put in the dictionary here so books underscore list books underscore list closing bracket closing there and then we were on a return dot render c so, okay let me go and save that so let's go back to the books page and did i close the server i did so let's go ahead and open back up the server and i need to cd out of templates and then go into the test project clear this out now i can run the server Let me go ahead and refresh the page here. All right, here is our awesome little template looking quite a bit better. So, all right, now I know I said that I would show you how to make it possible for an end user to add data to the database, but I'm realizing this will probably take up another 10 or 15 minutes, and I would actually be skipping a lot of valuable information from the Django tutorial. So as I mentioned before, I've, I've sort of been loosely following the Django tutorial. And my hope is that you can use this as a starting off point, that you go back and start the tutorial over again and ha just have a better understanding of what is going on. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you again soon.